what's going on guys now we've had quite a few mods on the channel recently so it's time we went back and just did a little mend it's not going to be on the mark 7 just yet that is going to be coming soon because we need to get this thing running get this back on the road but there's a few things i just need to finish off on the mark 6 before we can do that the car's been up in the air for a few days while i get a few jobs done that you're going to see shortly but for this video there's something that's been bothering me for a little while. When I'm driving, there's a horrible rumbling sound from the rear. Now, I know it's not the wheel bearings because I've had those both change recently. I've tried a few things so far, and through a process of elimination, there's only really one thing it can be. I've already changed the top mounts on the rear shocks, and I've removed the spare wheel and the jack and everything from the boot because the clamp that holds that down was broken, and I thought maybe it was that rattling around. But neither of those things solved it. A few people have said it could just be the rear tyres that need changing, and I will be changing those soon, but I can't show you the wheels right now, because that's coming up in a future video. But then I was driving into work the other day and one of the guys at work said that it looked like the rear shock absorbers had gone because the car was bouncing around like hell on the driveway at work. So we've got some new rear shocks to go on the car. I haven't gone for anything fancy. I've just gone for some OEM replacements, but we'll see. Hopefully they'll make a difference and make the ride a bit more comfortable. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the arch liner here. You don't need to do this to get the shocks out, but it'll make things a lot easier because the two bolts that hold the top mount to the body of the car are actually quite difficult to get to and it's a nightmare to try and see them. So I'm gonna remove all these little clips that hold the arch liner to the wheel arch just with a pry tool i think there's about six of these little things but i'm not sure if my car's missing a couple but we'll quickly pop them off there's also a couple of these plastic pins that hold the arch liner to the rear bumper but i forgot to reinstall those after we wrapped the rear bumper a few videos ago and then the arch liner should just pull out there's a top mount on the top of the shock which is just held to the body of the car by these two bolts here and the bottom of the shock is held to the rear axle by this bolt by the bottom of the spring so we're going to jack up the rear beam slightly just to take the weight of it just to take the tension off this bolt holding the shock to the bottom of the axle so i'm going to loosen the bolts on both sides with a breaker bar and then because i'm lazy i'm just going to wind it out the rest of the way with an impact gun but it helps if you put it in reverse and then we'll undo the other side so now we can undo the two 10mm bolts holding the top mount to the body of the car. And the shocks are out. Like I said, I've already tried replacing the top mount, so these are pretty much brand new. So we're going to swap these over onto the new struts. Sadly, I didn't get a new dust cover for it. I meant to, completely forgot. So we're going to reuse this one for now, and I'll get some new ones as and when. There's a 13mm bolt holding the top mount to the shock. So we're just going to use the impact gun to try and get this off. So that's the old one. And this is our new shock. So we'll just check that they look, you know, roughly the same. I mean, they're not quite the same, but... I think they'll be fine. All the measurements check out, just a slightly different construction. Like I said, I don't really get anything upgraded or anything like that. They're just a standard sort of OEM style replacement. So fingers crossed, that should be the same. So let's move the top mount over to the new shock. Then I'm gonna put some silicone grease on the threads just because there's obviously this rubber part on the top mount here. So we just don't want anything to damage that. If you use certain types of grease, it could damage the rubber. So we're gonna use silicone grease just to lubricate these threads because I remember when I did the top mount on the other side, the nut was actually quite stiff and I couldn't get it off. The shock was just spinning. It was kind of like when we did the front shocks when we put the lowering springs on the car back, what was it, Christmas time last year? And that was an absolute nightmare. So just a bit of grease on there. Buzz this new one on. And then the reinstall is pretty much just the opposite of the removal. We're going to locate the bottom of the shock into the rear axle. Might have to try and compress this a little bit just to get a bit of clearance. So I'm going to put the two 10mm bolts holding the top mount to the body of the car just in by hand. And then I'm just gonna put the bolt that holds the shock to the rear beam in by hand. Tighten up the top mount bolts. Tighten up the lower shock bolt. Now I can reinstall the wheel arch liner. Then we can put all these little clips back on. And this time, I'm going to remember these little clips that hold the arch liner to the bumper. 
sorted. So that was nice and easy. Now let's crack on and do the other side. Just to show you, this side is the one that's gone like, that's so bad. And this is the side that I can hear that rumbling noise from. Okay, so this is the side that gave me a bit of trouble last time. So we're gonna have to hold the, uh, the shock still with some mole grips. So something I learned when I did the front shocks uh, for when we fitted the lowering springs back in the winter is to, if you're gonna grip this with more grips, do it at the top because if you damage this piece, it doesn't really matter. If you damage it lower down towards where it actually goes into the body of the shock, then you know you could get scratches in this, which will mean that whatever's inside here could leak past the seal. So if you do it at the top, that doesn't go anywhere near the seal, so you should be fine. But I'm still gonna put a piece of <laughs> some of the fabric that we used to wrap the headliner around there. Trusty set of mole grips. Hold that still. So there we go, that's the rear shock absorber. It's changed nice and easy. Now all we need to do is put the wheels back on and lower the car down so we can take it for a test drive and see if it's made a difference. But I'm not gonna show you me doing that because like I said earlier in the video, I've been doing some work on the wheels and I don't wanna show you those just yet. So let's get the car down and let's go for a test drive. Okay, so jumping in the car, I'm really excited to see if these rear shocks actually make any difference because if I'm honest, the ride in this car has been pretty damn uncomfortable for quite a while. At the start, I just kind of put it down to those cheap lowering springs that we fitted and just the fact that I live in Wales and the roads around here are horrendous. So, you know, it may be that it was just that the rear shocks have been gone pretty much since I got this car. It's always ridden pretty rough, but I did notice it was quite a bit worse after the lowering springs, so, you know, I guess really I just put it down to that. Like I said previously, the car was making this really horrible rumbling noise coming from the back, and it definitely made it when I was coming down my lane, but it didn't do it then as far as I know. It might just be because I was talking and I didn't really notice. But I'm just gonna go on a short little drive and see if I can hear that noise at all. I know it definitely makes it when I go into work. I'm back in work tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get a good idea of whether or not I'm still doing it on this little test drive. So we'll just go for a little drive. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it, but this was the noise that it was making. I did manage to get a little clip of it at the time. So hopefully you guys can hear that and I just want to go and see if it's still doing that and see if the car feels any better. But to be honest with you, straight from the off, I can already feel that this is a lot better. Like it just feels so much smoother. There's a little bump in the road just there. That feels smoother already, another little one there. But normally I'd be noticing things like that. And you know what? I also think back when we did the rear axle bushes, I think that if this was the case then, you know, if one of those shocks had gone then, I think potentially it was making that even worse because that did solve the sort of uh, stepping out problem that I was having when I went over bumps when I did those axle bushes, but it's still not quite ridden right since then. And I'm guessing that's probably because one of the rear shocks had blown out. I'm just gonna drive through my local village because there's a few speed bumps and a few little bits of rough road there. And I think that should give me a pretty good idea. I showed you that one shock before when we took it off, the one on the passenger's rear, and that was definitely gone. Like that was bouncing around so badly off the car. So I think that this was definitely what was causing our problem. Surprisingly, when I put that little video up, no one actually suggested that it could be the rear shocks. A lot of people said it could be the rear tires that need changing. Uh, a couple of people said top mounts or wheel bearings that are doing the rumbling noise. And I said, well, it's not either of those because I've changed them both in it. I know what a rear wheel bearing sounds like, and I don't know if you would have quite picked it up, but that rumbling noise was, it was different to the kind of noise you get from a bearing. 
you'd hear it going over there before and it seems to have gone so i definitely think that that rear shock especially i'm not sure it was both but especially that one on the passenger side had definitely gone there's another little speed bump here and it just sounds so much better so i am so happy with that i think that's definitely what was causing it and it was fixed pretty cheaply i got those two rear shocks for 40 pound off ebay they're brand new and that's fixed it so i am super happy so to celebrate let's hear that new exhaust we fitted in the last video hope you can hear this i'm never gonna get bored of that i can't remember the last time i listened to my radio since fitting that exhaust Okay, so I'm just turning back up onto my road now and I always used to hear this noise when I was going up here because this bit of road is really rough. And no, it's not doing it at all. That has definitely solved it. That's awesome. Okay, so there we go. That is my Rattly rear end sorted. Now it's actually been probably over a week at this point to actually fit them. So I've had a few days to drive this around and see how much of a difference it's actually made. For those of you that know the M54 between Telford and Wolverhampton, you probably know that that piece of road there, the motorway is horrendous. Before, before I changed these rear shocks, I couldn't drive down there over 60 mile an hour. It was awful. It was just rattling all over the place. And even at that speed, it wasn't comfortable. I traveled to Birmingham back earlier today and it was totally sorted. I could drive at any sort of speed down there. It didn't matter. So I'm so happy that those have fixed the problem. And it was a pretty cheap fix as well. So if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up or let me know in the comments. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, let me know what you want to see me do to this car that might make you subscribe. But for this video, it's time to end. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.